On the night and early morning of the 3rd and 4th of February 1973, six men were shot dead in the New Lodge area of North Belfast and one man gravely wounded. Two of these men, Jim Sloan and Jim McCann, were killed in a drive-by shooting at the top of the New Lodge Road around 11.45pm. Within minutes of this, British forces opened fire on the junction of the New Lodge Road and Eddingham Street from both the direction of Dunkern Gardens and from the British military observation posts on top of the flats in New Lodge Road. Tony T.C. Campbell, Brendan Fat McGuire, John Lochran and Ambrose Hardy were killed in these attacks with Charlie Carson severely wounded. At the time, the British Army stated that six gunmen had been killed and one wounded in a gun battle with their troops in the New Lodge area of North Belfast. Witness statements from the local community and the families of the six men directly contradict this account of events. Eyewitnesses maintain that all these men were unarmed and were attacked without provocation. Indeed, eyewitnesses maintain that all six men were killed either socialising on a Saturday night or assisting the injured. Now, on the 50th anniversary of these killings, this short documentary will detail eyewitness accounts and family testimonies in order to both contest the British Army narrative around these killings and commemorate the lives of those that were so cruelly taken away. On the night of 3rd of February 1973, I was in Lynch's Bar here at the top of the New Lodge Road, having a wee drink with my friends Jimmy McCann, Jimmy Sloan and Geordie Burns. We were out in Lynch's back room having a couple of beer. After the evening finished, we were heading home. We stepped outside. I asked Jimmy Sloan what he'd done with his beer. He says he left it on the table. I said, I'm going to finish that. So I, I proceeded to go back into the back room, drunk the drink, and on my way back out, I heard shooting. Within a space of a minute, I came back outside, there was crowds starting to gather. There was two bodies laying here at the front, is the front of the road. I didn't recognize them. I had to look twice. I seen Jimmy McCann and Jimmy Sloan land there. And then a lady appeared. I didn't know who the lady was at the time. And the ambulance come and we put the two people in the, in the ambulance. And the woman got in the ambulance along with us. And Jimmy McCann was on the right hand side of the ambulance. And Jimmy Sloan was on the left. I remember looking at Jimmy McCann and he had been shot through the chin. Or Jimmy Sloan had been shot through the chin. And as I had come out, and Jimmy, Jimmy Sloan was breathing up blood. I asked the paramedic, could he help him? And there was nothing he could do, he gave me kitchen roll. And I proceeded to wipe his mouth on that. I think, I think Jimmy McCann died on the way on the, on the way on the hospital. And Jimmy Sloan lived to the middle of the night. And then he passed away. On the night of 3rd of February, 1973, I was speaking to TC Campbell here at this corner. Um, we are discussing where Jim and Jimmy was shot dead at the top of the road. TC wanted to go somewhere, so we decided to meet back here in 15 minutes. As TC walked around the corner, I walked up the street. I got about 10 or 15 yards when I heard gunshots. I ran back to the corner and seen TC land in the middle of the street. At that, a crowd started to gather on both sides of the street. And people on the other side decided to try and save TC. And some of them ended up getting shot. Boy, he was born. 
three weeks after. And, oh God, I don't know. It was a terrible time. Not only for me, but for all the other people. I felt for them too, because I do. But the thing that hit me hardest was it was me that brought your light. And the only thing I could console myself with is when he would have heard the shot, he would have come out. That was his nature. Oh my God, I never forget that night the day I died. And when I went out onto the road, and I see no harm of him, oh God bless us, I can't believe it. And I said, by John, and I lifted him up my arms, and I said, John, if you can't answer me, move, move. Let me know you're living. But John never moved and said the shooting came from Duncan Gardens. But I, I tell you something. The shooting come from the soldiers on the top of the flats. It was um, custom man when it was shooting or anything. My father and mother would have sent my younger brothers and sisters up to my the flats because it was safer. So I had them all up with me and when the shooting started about 11, the same thing, everybody in the flats would have went into their, their bathroom because it was supposed to be safer anyway. And our bathroom was at the lift shaft. But when you were in there, you could hear every word of the soldiers on the roof. So. It started about a half an hour after we were into the bathroom, all this like banter going on. Um, you get that one, I guess the other one. If you can, uh, no, you've missed that one, do it again. Look, you've got this one and I've got that one. This went on for a long time. And it was just like fellas playing a game, just going, um, I don't know, just a game. You never realised at the time it was actually shooting people. It was a night, in the new lodge, nobody will ever forget. It was my 21st birthday. And you just, I don't know, this, they had apparently got their night sights and were trying out their night sights, but trying them out in human targets. I mean, it was the next morning when my father came up to get the kids and told us that all these people had been shot dead, all young fellas out doing absolutely nothing that they had picked off. There was no mention of anybody having a gun or shooting back at them. It was just, you get him and I get him. It was terrible. My name is Winnie Campbell. My first husband, Jim Sloan, was murdered on the 3rd of February, 1973. On the night that Jim was murdered, we, me and Jim were going out up to Lynch's bar to meet our friends, Jim McCann and his girlfriend. I felt sick on the way up and says to Jim, I feel very sick, I want to go home. And Jim says he would go home with me. And I says, no, you can't do that because Jim McCann and his girlfriend will be waiting on us and they'll not know what happened. So I went on home. Then I heard all the shooting. And then my door knocked. And Jim's daddy was at the door to tell me I had to go to the morgue because Jim was shot dead. I had to go to the morgue and identify him, which was the most horrendous thing of my life. I didn't realise that night that so many had been shot dead. I, was, I thought it was just Jim. And I didn't realise that I was pregnant. We were married on Boxing Day, and Jim was murdered on the 3rd of February. We were five, six weeks married. And then I was a widow at 18. 
My name's Billy Campbell. Um, I'm the older brother of Tony T.C. Campbell. He was murdered on the 3rd of February, 1973. It was his 19th birthday, and we was celebrating. He was really happy. He was jumping about. And then we went to New England Disco, and we're having a good time. And we're headed down to New Lodge. And I wanted to go on home because I had a few drinks in me. And he said to me, well, I'll stay up the road for a verse mates. And I said, fair enough, I was, say, he was 19 that day, he was dead happy, he was running about, having a good time. And that's what the day was about. And then the next morning, when they told us he was shot, he still lived till the next morning. And we got up to the hospital, and I knew, by the way, it turned we were going to the morgue rather than the wards. We went down into the ward, and it was me, my dad, and Jerry Lynch. And none of them, I went in and identified him. He had a slight cut here on the top of his eye, and there's a sheet over him. And I got the sheet and I pulled it back. Um, the guy in the morgue told me, he said, you shouldn't have done that. I said, I can't, I had to see the damage. It was a lot of damage. He was hit 17 times, so he was. And uh, basically had no stomach at all. There's nothing there. Doctors tried to cover it up a bit, but you could see. I found out later that his spine was shattered. That's when the bullets went through and then took his spine completely out. Dr. <laughs> my name is Danny McCready. And, um, I was born in the same house with Dr. Um, Jimmy. I always, I always lost Jimmy as my brother. Jimmy always lost me as his brother. On the night I was coming home, I was coming home from um, the um, New Inton Disco. I went into my Aunt Bridget's house um, that night, that night, and um, there was gunfire all night, and um, I just stayed at. I just stayed with my Aunt Bridget that night, and then um, I went home. The next morning, and then that's when I heard that Jimmy was shot dead. And Jimmy was a quiet fella, so he was. He was a quiet fella. Um, Jimmy was deep. Jimmy was um. Jimmy was um. I think he was the best brother you could ever have. So he was. Um, but I love Jimmy. I love Jimmy. I know. Uh, I think a night Jimmy was shot dead. Um, I think a night Jimmy was shot dead. I think a whole family died. Uh, uh, even, 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 even till this day, it still affects us. It's, uh, it, it's still hard. It's still hard. My name's Rosaline Beatty, and my brother is one of the new Lord Six that was murdered, Ambrose Hardy. He was out one Saturday night for a wee drink. He worked all week as an ice belter and out having a good night. And whenever the shooting started, he was near, one. he was the last one that was shot, but he was waving a white flag for to say that he was coming out of the circle bar and he was shot in the back of the head. 
and the more or less said that there were six gunmen that was shot. But that there was really untrue for my brother. It was a very quiet, innocent fella who worked all his life. It never really goes away. My mother and father were good people. My daddy worked all his life and it had an awful, my daddy went into work and the, he worked in the aircraft factory and they put all the papers up on the wall stating that there were six gunmen shot and my daddy went in, put on an awful time. But he went to work because he knew his son was innocent. It really, you never, it never goes away. Well, I do hope we get justice. Like, we know that there were innocent men, but I hope that he does get justice. We know the truth, but we want the truth to come out. We, we need the truth to come out, you know. We need an apology, and we definitely were fighting this here for 50 years, and we hope that we do get something out of, out of it at the end. Justice is all we want.